Hey everyone, thanks for coming. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, Simon Ford. I work at a company called Bleacon that uh, helps people roll out uh, Beacon networks. Um, I'm going to take you on a little history tour from perhaps where you know Beacons, where they were first imagined to uh, hopefully where you'll see they're uh, going uh, in the future. So once upon a time, there was this device, which hopefully you recognize as the most aggressive iPhone that Apple ever built. It was like, it was not designed to go in your hat, but it was a very important design. It was the iPhone 4S and it was the first mobile phone to include a technology called Bluetooth Low Energy, which had become part of the Bluetooth spec. So very uh, foundational for Bluetooth Low Energy as a technology to get into um, a product like that. But with it also came another technology that Apple built on top of Bluetooth Low Energy, Bluetooth Low Energy adverts, are called iBeacon. And this was a technology to allow uh, a phone to do sort of a micro-locationing uh, system. I assume some of you, well, a lot of you will have heard of this technology. And what did that let you do? Well, it let you put physical beacons, so Bluetooth uh, beacons in uh, physical locations that just advertised their existence. And in true Silicon Valley style, that allowed uh, a phone to tell you that you could get a voucher off Starbucks. And this led to about 100 different startups all getting venture capital money to build on this innovation. So a really a transformative uh, time for Bluetooth to launch Bluetooth Low Energy into the world, and, but also the start of what really kicked off the, the kind of Beacons ecosystem. And then uh, subsequently from that, I, I was lucky enough to work with uh, Google and um, Scott Janssen, who uh, did uh, something called Yuri Beacon. It took Google's approach to Beacons where it was actually advertising a URL so if you were near a physical uh, location, it could represent a URL. You could visit that location. It could tell you about uh, where you were. And then that evolved into um, a standard called Eddystone. So iBeacon and Eddystone were the, the two main formats that drove the early stage of beacons. And really, this was about triggering proximity. So you as a user came near a physical location. An app on your phone knew that you were nearby, and it would trigger something. So I would say, this is the exhibit you're in front of in a museum. This is um, an offer we can give you in a shop um, and things like that. So it's very marketing interaction driven and really about knowing like a, a, a location you're in. So very, and you can see why Apple and Google were interested in this. It's very user centric. The industry sort of took advantage of the technology that was being proliferated here. So the silicon, all the support in operating systems, things like that. And they kind of flipped it round. So instead of the beacon being in its location and almost representing that location, and a device coming nearby to realize it was in that location, industry went, well, hang on, we can flip this round and we can actually put the physical beacon transmitter, the Bluetooth transmitter, on a thing we care where it is and have a receiver uh, notice when it turns up. So now this is a model where, let's say it's on a package or a, uh, you know, a pallet or something like that, and it comes into your warehouse, you know, now know that this thing has arrived. Um, and this is actually where a lot of the volume of beacons has come from. So uh, it's, it's still actually very much used in uh, the user space, even though it's not as visible, it's not as popular. But this tracking, using it as a tracking technology, a really low cost uh, wireless tracking technology has really exploded. So that was kind of phase one. And you'll actually find that even the form factors these devices then evolved. So you have things like custom enclosures, so it can clip onto, uh, let's say, cages in warehouses. Uh, you're building in sensors, so you not only know where something is, but what the condition it's experiencing is. Um, or maybe you even put it in form factors where someone wears it, so you can track a person, not just a, um, an asset or, or something like that. So th this has really exploded, and it, this, is, this has really driven a huge amounts of volume in using beacons for a tracking and actually helped Bluetooth become pretty much one of the most widely deployed um, IoT technologies, even though people don't really talk about it that much. So yeah, phase two, flip it round. It's actually tracking assets rather than tracking the people walking up to things. Um, very much hooking into cloud systems to you know update inventory and, and things like that. So that's probably you know a, a good example of state of the art a few years ago. But what's changed over the last um, uh, few years is the idea to build these into actual full networks. So if anyone's familiar with AirTags, you know, understand where your uh, suitcase is wherever in the world. That's actually exploiting a whole network of hotspots, the Apple phones, to spot an AirTag device or maybe your uh, AirPods, which are transmitting a Bluetooth beacon. So that's actually that technology. There's no GPS involved or anything like that. It's 
a Bluetooth beacon being spotted by a network of phones that can be presented to you in an application. So this is like a network of, of beacons now. And, that, and that's what we work on. So we're actually building, you know, the co commercial equivalent of this, where people can embed Bluetooth into devices that can be spotted by a whole network of devices to drive uh, data applications, whether that's tracking or data collection. And one of Bluetooth's sort of killer features is its prevalence. So it's already in all these devices. If you look at, uh, you know, something like Laura, which was just talked about, it's not in any mobile phone. RFID is not in every mobile phone or computer, but Bluetooth is. Um, and that's really interesting to turn on this capability in a load of assets that people already have. And on the flip side, the Bluetooth chips that actually are the beacons, they are dirt cheap. They're made by, you know, 20 or so silicon manufacturers. They've really hit billion. They're made in billions. So you can imagine how cheap these things can get. They, you think of it in cents rather than dollars or tens of dollars. Anyway, so that, that's, uh, I mean, we're, and we're building this to, you know, service the commercial markets. And I guess, uh, you know, a good example of how this is used, something on an asset is tracked and at different places through a supply chain can be spotted by a Bluetooth enabled device. And that allows you at a very low cost to deploy a network that allows you to track something through um, physical space using existing infrastructure. So it's a, a really exciting uh, technology. But would you have designed the technology this way? Probably not. But when you look at economies of scale, and the prevalence of Bluetooth, it's actually a very pragmatic way to, to build real world uh, deployments. But these beacons were invented 10 years ago. They actually have limitations. They only broadcast information. You don't know if anyone's heard it. They have quite limited security because of what they were designed for originally. And you do actually have to have coverage everywhere because if you don't hear them, you don't get the message. So what's actually happening now is um, combined with, I guess, Bluetooth technology, which is also come along a, a huge way. This is a, a latest Nordic chip, uh, Bluetooth chip next to a pound coin there. So you can get an idea of the size. This is more powerful than your Nokia phone back in the day. So this is a, this is a proper computing platform. So what's happening now is these beacons themselves are actually becoming a lot more autonomous and smart. So rather than just broadcasting that they exist, they can now um, uh, have two-way uh, communication. So that means that you know something has arrived, which is surprisingly important if you want to transmit data, you want to know that someone's heard it. And you can support global time and location. So all these things can synchronize and you can actually have security that is suitable for the kind of applications people are building now. And you can have really advanced firmware. So these processes are powerful enough to actually run AI algorithms on the edge to take, you know, high bandwidth sensor information and turn it into events that you can log, store, and maybe later synchronize with your system. So it's a, it's a really powerful a place you get to with some incredibly cheap Bluetooth technology combined with the processing power that it, in these devices, you're actually ending up with quite an interesting tool set that people are trying to exploit in quite interesting ways. Um, yeah, and I guess a lot of this is interesting because beacons up until now have primarily been about location. But what's interesting is when you start to get proper communication channels, they can start delivering data as well. And, and actually, you know, that's what a lot of industries are looking to do. It's not just where something is, but what was it doing? Uh, what has it been doing? And things like that. So sort of a, a technology that's perhaps a bit hidden, but is exploding. So take that example now as a smart beacon. This uh, tracker on a cage in, let's say, a, a fulfillment center can spot other anchors. It can spot other beacons and say, I was here, even if it hasn't got connectivity. It can spot other cages. It can work out when one left uh, a lorry even though they were both out of range. Uh, it can log events like impacts or temperature, um, you know, going out of temperature range because it's perishable goods or something like that. And perhaps when it gets back to the warehouse or to a, a part of the warehouse, it can actually synchronize all of that information with time back to databases and you have the full picture. And that's really important because the reality is most people aren't trying to do interventions on a particular device. They're trying to analyze a whole a data set to find trends that, uh, our interventions on a whole system. So that's where we are now, really exciting. We have a paper on uh, a case study on that on our stand uh, with a partner that you can have a look at. But there's just one more thing I wanted to show, which is uh, some uh, where, th where this is also going, which is quite exciting. Most people understand these uh, beacons are in these sort of plastic uh, case form factors. They're adding sensors, they're getting quite advanced. Um, but what's also starting to happen is the form factors these are turning up in are advancing too. So uh, at almost two extremes, uh, this Bluetooth technology is now being made available in printed labels, so paper labels. 
using printed batteries, so zinc batteries rather than lithium batteries that can be disposed and things like that. They're not dangerous. So you can see suddenly this technology becomes an active label on our products. The other side is that technology is getting embedded into products themselves, where the beacon or the sensor is not the primary uh, purpose, but actually getting data, getting location out of another product um, is really exciting. So if that, if that chip costs you, uh, say, a dollar to put in there, that's a very cheap way of adding a whole new dimension to a product that already exists. So you can imagine in healthcare and things like that, that's really exciting. Once these things become smart, there's a whole lot of use cases. I'm not going to go into it, but you could, they, they really start to become like proper IoT devices that you'll hear in terms of cellular and law and things like that. So it's a, it's a really exciting thing to bring. Um, and if you're interested, there's a, a white paper you can go and read. We have a booth just over there. If you're interested in this sort of thing, um, come and find us and we'd be really happy to uh, chat with you about what's going on in this space. Thanks very much.